Hello guys and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you about my recent buskin setup. So over the years my buskin setup has evolved from a small battery powered speaker to now an 18 kilo speaker and with all the other bells and whistles it easily comes to about 40 and or 50 kilos. And since I started to bask with saxophone and I also ventured once with a guitar I really wanted to make it easier for myself to do so and um, I looked at uh, creating a much lighter and simpler setup that I'm going to share with you today. So broadly speaking we're going to cover three areas today. First of all I'm going to talk to you about which speaker I have gone for and also I'll, I'll tell you like a, I'll give you a short retrospective of all the other speakers that I've had so far. Secondly uh, we'll talk about all the other bits and pieces that uh, you need for busking and lastly we'll talk about how do you transport it all easily because there are a few options that are available. And talking more specifically we're going to be covering speaker choice microphone and cables, microphone stand, which phone holder, tablet holder I'm using and I'm, I'm recommending, instrument accessories that you might need depending on the instrument that you're playing and then bag and trolley options. So first and foremost possibly the most important question for any street musician out there is what speaker should I be getting and this question is important because it will dictate a lot of the other things and decisions that you may need to take regarding the rest of your setup. On this picture you can see from left to right the evolution of my speaker setup from Mackie Freeplay to Roland Street Cube X to a pair of Bose S1 Pros and subsequently the Line 6 powered amplifier. So why is the speaker choice so important for a street musician? It's all about this fine balance between the sound quality on the one hand and weight and mobility on the other. Usually the heavier and the bigger the speaker the better is your sound and better sound means that it is more probable that you will attract people and you will not piss them off with some rattling noise from your, coming out from your speaker if it's too small and you will stand above the ambient noise of the cars, public transport and people. On the other hand you want to avoid carrying extra kilograms with you because your muscles, your back will not appreciate it especially when you have to move around from one place to another and a tired musician is not a good musician. In addition to that in many cities around the world now there are regulations in terms of how loud you can be and you may not be able to use the bigger speaker to its full potential. So this Mackie Freeplay was my first Boskin amp ever and it only lasted me for a couple of weeks. The first one I got was faulty so I had to replace it with another one in the shop and then the second one was okay but then my friend who came to listen to me sing heard that when I pushed the amp it developed this rattly noise in the bass section and in addition to that it was running off these huge D-sized batteries that are about three or four times the size of your AA battery and these batteries are hard to find in your corner store and also they're very expensive so it would have been very uneconomical to run this speaker in the long run. Luckily my Mackie Freeplay was still under the 90 day return policy at the store that I bought it from. So I took it back and asked for it to be replaced with a more expensive Roland Street Cube X. And Roland Street Cube and Roland Street Cube X are very cleverly marketed by Roland as your default busking amp, at least at the time. And I can totally see why because it's uh, very compact, not that heavy and it can take some beating because it's got this very rugged plastic enclosure and also it is powered by AA batteries 
So I just bought a bunch of rechargeable AA batteries from a local store and I've been using them ever since. So I used Trollan Street Cube X for a few months, but then one of the street musicians mentioned that my sound quality could still be improved and I started researching other options and looking into upgrading my sound system yet again. And one option that I was considering was a Bose L1 Compact, but it wasn't a battery powered speaker. So I had to then you know, complicate my setup with an inverter, with uh, external batteries and things like that. And I was really liking my compact setup with the Roland Street Cube X. And Bose had just released this Bose S1 Pro speakers uh, that were battery powered with a lithium ion battery. And I took a gamble and decided to order two of the speakers. Now, because of the issues with the delivery, I only received one speaker at first. And then I took the speaker for a test on the day. And to my surprise, it really didn't hold up that well in terms of the loudness and volume to the Roland Street Cube X. Although the sound quality was a little bit nicer, it was crispier and, and cleaner to my ears, but I was disappointed that it wasn't loud enough. So I then decided not to return it yet and wait until the second one arrived. And then when the second one arrived, I took both of them to my busking spot and I used both of the speakers and then I could definitely feel that the sound quality and the volume was enough or much better compared to a single Roland Street Cube X. So I ended up using the, the pair of the Bose S1 Pros for quite some time until again, um, the same street performer who I really respect came back and then he listened to my new setup and yet again commented that my setup could be improved. And what I ended up doing, I ended up borrowing his setup for the time that he was gone just to experiment with it and see if I, if I like it or not. And in the end, I did like it and decided to do yet another upgrade. So my current and eventual setup includes this mains powered Line 6 speaker. And I use this setup on the weekends most of the time, but because I wanted to try out busking with a saxophone and a guitar, which on its own weigh three to five kilos, I wanted to simplify my setup and also make it more portable and lighter. So my current setup for light busking includes this single Bose S1 Pro speaker, and I'm finding it more than adequate enough for my purposes. So, and I'm going to tell you what else I'm using in conjunction with this speaker. Now, since Bose released Bose S1 Pro, actually there are some alternatives on the market and I was considering getting a JBL Eon One Compact, which is slightly bigger and has a little bit more advanced functionality. So for example, it has phantom power for the condenser mix. You have more advanced equalizer and you have other nifty things like USB charging ports. I did get a good deal on the Bose S1 Pro, so that kind of swayed my decision in, in favor of Bose S1 Pro. And there are some features that um, are not there in JBL EN1 Compact that um, kind of also drove my decision. So for example, Bose has this tilt position that you can use which I think is better for busking than your normal vertical position, unless you want to carry a separate pole mount. I also like the aesthetics of the Bose S1 Pro. To me, it looks a little bit more refined compared to the curvy lines of the JBL Eon One Compact, but that's totally down to the taste. And the other thing with JBL Eon One Compact Although it has a more advanced and tunable equalizer, I was really looking to get something that is more plug and play, and it also swayed my decision in favor of the Bose S1 Pro. 
Okay, now that we've got the main question of the speaker out of the way, we're gonna quickly cover all the other bits and pieces that you need for busking and some of which are dependent on the speaker that you get. So let's talk about the microphone and the cables that you're going to need. First of all, this is the Sure Better 58 microphone. It's a dynamic microphone, not a condenser mic. So it doesn't need the phantom power and therefore I can just use it with the Bose S1 Pro without any extra pedals and, and supplies. And I've had this microphone for many years and it's uh, like many of the Shure microphones, it's a very trustworthy and road worthy microphone. And when I was looking at, into getting a Shure microphone, there are a few alternatives, but Shure Better 58A is uh, supposedly quite good for the vocals. And I've been using this microphone together with saxophone as well and it sounds absolutely fine. Another cable that I recommend you have instead of relying on the Bluetooth connectivity is this 3.5 to 3.5 millimeter stereo cable. And instead of going into the 3.5 millimeter input on the Bose S1 Pro, I recommend that you go into the second combo XLR jack. And to do that, you will need this Rode VXLR adapter that just hooks on top of the 3.5 input here. To connect my microphone to the speaker, I'm using this Mogami XLR cable. And Mogami is the brand name in the industry known for its quality and reliability. However, with that also comes the price. So these things are quite expensive, but hopefully once you buy one, it's gonna last you for years to come. If you're planning to accompany yourself on a guitar, then you're gonna need a so-called TS or tip sleeve unbalanced mono cable. And you can tell it from a stereo cable because it only has the tip of the cable and then there's a sleeve whereas a TRS balanced stereo cable will have a tip, a sleeve and a ring. Now after I got this instrument cable I realized that there's also a different variety of the cables which have a vertical right angle connection to the guitar and you may prefer to get one with a right angle connection because the, it will make it easier for you to put the guitar on a stand, especially if the stand is not too high up and closer to the ground. And second of all, there's also a variety of the cables that allow you to unplug the guitar without the popping sound, which may damage your speaker. Now with the microphone and the cables out of the way, let's talk about other important accessories that I'm using on a daily basis. First and foremost, let's talk about a very important accessory for me, which is a microphone stand. And as with many accessories in this particular video, this one is made by a company called Hercules, which make a lot of very well sought out music accessories. For example, this microphone stand features a so-called easy clutch mechanism, which makes it easy to adjust the height of the microphone stand very quickly in a matter of seconds. And the other cool innovation is this thing called hideaway boom and you can hide the microphone boom and then as well take it out in a matter of seconds and it can be adjusted upwards and downwards as you wish. Yet another accessory by Hercules that I use on a daily basis is its really cool phone slash tablet holder and this tablet holder is very adjustable you can adjust the height you can adjust the width and it's all lockable. So for example, if I want to use my iPhone, I make the width narrower. If I want to use my tablet, then I, I adjust the width like so. And it also comes with different mechanisms. So if you want to use it in conjunction with your microphone stand, you can easily do so. And also I can use this part at home 
if I want to use it with my music, music streams by unlocking it, taking it out and then plugging it into another accessory here, which I have mounted on top of a candle, candle jar. <laughs> if you're planning on using instruments when busking, it's important to take good care of the instruments and make sure that they, for example, don't accidentally fall over if you don't secure them properly. So for both the guitar and the saxophone, I decided to purchase the instrument stands, also in this case made by Hercules. As I mentioned before, it is very important to keep the weight of your gear under control and make yourself as mobile as possible. And the same philosophy applies to the accessories as well. So as you can see, both the guitar stand and the saxophone stand are very small and lightweight and they fold away quite easily. So take, for example, the guitar stand. It can be assembled in a matter of seconds. And this is your guitar stand. Same goes for the saxophone. This one is about 300, maybe 400 grams. And there we go. That's all done. And when folded, this saxophone stand easily hides in the bow of your saxophone. And this is actually not the lightest stand out there. There's another stand made by K&M, but that stand here in Australia is twice as expensive as the stand made by Hercules, although it is maybe 100 grams lighter. Okay, and finally, let's talk about the different options that you have for transporting all the gear that we've just discussed. These are the various options that I've looked at for transporting the Bose S1 Pro speaker and the accessories around. If you decide to go for a different speaker, then some of these options may not be a good fit for you. Now, there are various factors that you need to take into the consideration when looking at the transportation options. And roughly speaking, in my mind, I've looked at mobility and transportation, space for the extras, so the microphone cable and all the other cables, etc. The cost, obviously, and also the reliability, because you don't want to buy something and then have to replace it a few months down the line. And you can see the ranking, and I'll briefly explain to you my rationale behind it. So, for example, if we take the shopping trolley, it's actually quite easy to handle. It's got big wheels and you can easily pull it onto the bus. Or if you're taking a train, it's also quite easy to navigate uh, that. Um, the wheels are big enough so it's easy to roll around so you won't feel the weight as much. The same doesn't go for the industrial trolley. So while the bigs are, wheels are big on the industrial trolley, it's not, in my experience, easy to pull onto a bus, for example. The travel bag is kind of self-explanatory. You, you can use different handles to pull it onto the bus. The Bose S1 Pro, it's great because you can throw it at the back of your shoulders, but at the same time, you have to carry this weight on your shoulders. And what it also means in my case is that I cannot use the shoulders for carrying my saxophone, for example. Uh, when it comes for the space for the extras, the shopping trolley has got some space depending on which one you go for. The industrial trolley has zero space. So you have to come up with some solution. So for example, have a, a aluminum case or some, some sort of a box to fit all the other things into. The travel bag is okay-ish. There is some space in it, so I can throw some things around, but I, in my experience, I actually had to purchase yet another bag for transporting all the other extras. And the Bose S1 Pro, for, from the reviews that I've seen, it has enough space to put your cords and other accessories into it. 
Now, one other important factor that I forgot to mention is keeping your speaker and accessories safe. And this is one of the reasons why in the end I decided to go for this travel bag by Samsonite, which can accommodate both S1 Pro because it's got this expandable option. This bag also features four wheels, which makes it quite easy to roll alongside yourself. And to carry all the other extras, I actually ended up buying this photography bag, which also has this strap that I can use with the handle of the travel bag. This concludes the review of my latest Baskin setup light. It's not as light as I'd like it to be, but it is manageable. If you guys have any questions, ideas or suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Please remember to give this video a like, subscribe if you're not yet subscribed, keep the notifications on and otherwise I'll see you in my next video or in one of my music streams. See you!